Okay, so this is back to Dylan one. I apologize for the sound quality. I left my microphone at home, uh, so whatever. <laughs> Hope it's not too bad. Okay, so let's review what we did, but then we're going to take a new track. We have Ashrei Ha'isha Shor Lo Halach Ba'atas Rishaim. Happy or praiseworthy is the man who does not follow the counsel of the wicked. Uvader Chataim Lo Mad, and he does not stand on the path of sinners. Uvamosh of Lazim Lo Yashav, he does not sit in the section seating of scorners. In Torah Hashem Chavto, only in the Torah of Hashem is his desire or delight. Uvasura So Yehege Yomav Lala, and in his Torah, choose whether that's capital or lowercase h. He he thinks in two day and night. I think it's capital, but. Isaac didn't. And he will be like a uh, tree planted alongside streams of water, a sharpirio yitain bito, that gives forth its fruit in its time, but alehu lo and its leaves doesn't wither. And everything, I think we said he does, he succeeds in, right? It's not the uh, trees uh, don't succeed. Uh, is it being a person of the field? I'm trying to remember the, uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, is he, Adam, it's a, no, as a person, yeah, as a person, is a free person. Yeah, you got it right. Yeah. Adam, not a person of the field, though. Adam has said it's free. Isn't it the other way around? Free Adam, it's a sad. I don't know. <laughs> well, that crashed and burned. <laughs> All right. Um. Anyway. Um. Uh, the wicked are not like that, not like the first, the previous pasuk. Kim kamots, they're like chaff. I tried to defend our roof that the wind drives away. Alkain, therefore, the wicked will not arise in justice. And the sinners in the council of the righteous. Because God knows, Hashem knows the way of the tzadikim, the way of the wicked will perish. So we have a host of questions. I'll read them super fast. What does Ashrei mean? Uh, both definitional uh, translation wise and uh, definition wise. What's the deal with Halicha Ba'atas Rashaim, Amida Bader Chataim, Yeshiva Bumashaliti, meaning what are each of those terms defined as and why those three? What's the ordering of the three bad categories if there is any? Uh, are these personalities the same as in Mishlei or not? We said that's kind of like an extraneous question, um, or not, it's not intrinsic from the, the puzzle. What does it mean that Kimator Sasham Khefto of So So Yehege Mavalila? Like, what does that imply about him? What extent does he desire it? Is it literally day and night? You know the thing about there's a statement about like learning secular studies. So this is one of the statements in the Gemara. I don't remember the exact wording, but it's about like and I forgot how it words it in terms of it doesn't say secular studies, but like when should you learn like secular studies? So then the person who answers close to the Gemara, uh so so yeah, just find a time that's neither your mom or life right now. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I don't know. I forgot how that's uh, interpreted. Uh, who is it? Oh, yeah, maybe that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, what does it mean? Sorry, who is the ish that has both these qualities of Pasuk Oliver Bet? Um, is there a middle ground? Meaning, if you take the Pasuk as one statement, it sounds like have these guys who doesn't do all this stuff and he does do this. Is that like a continuum? Or is it just like only that guy's happy, you know. Um, like, also, what if you are avoiding the bad people, but you're, you're not involved in Torah Hashem? Like, is that, do you partake of the happiness, or is the happiness only when you do both? Um, more questions. Uh, what's the nimshal of the botanical muscle? Oh, sorry, are the east and the tzaddik the same person? If not, what's the relationship? Because it goes on to talk about the, um, the tzaddikim and the rishayim, but it leads by talking about the each and kind of seamlessly transitions. And Russia and tzaddik are opposites, but it sounds like three and four are being contrasted, and three is talking about the each. So yeah, yeah. A equals B, B equals C, that stuff, yeah. Um, what's the, all, what are all elements of the mushroom for the tzaddik and the rasha? Uh, what's the relationship between the K and the plus that comes before after it and after it? Because it says al and then key, which are both like causal explanation words. Um, what does it mean that the rishayim will not stand up in mishpah? What does it mean that the chatayim will not stand up in az tzaddikim? What happens to the lates in plus K? It just drops out. And then what does it mean that Hashem Yodea Derech Tzadikim and what does it mean that Derech Roshan Tovid? Um, why the inconsistency in the subject and the predicate? Meaning they're talking about what Hashem does for the first part and they're talking about the Derech itself with the Russia. Yeah, those are all the questions. Well, birds just fell. That's not something you usually see. Okay. All right, so those are the questions. And uh, rather than try to review what we did last time, I kind of want to start afresh with Me'iri. Okay, so let's do the Me'iri. Uh, so what I did was I looked at the... Um, the sport on the Miri, and I found that the Miri was sport was really good. Miri was really gooder. <laughs> um, 
So if you look on the Taurus Prime right column, uh, underneath the, yeah, so above the spawn underneath Ibn Ezra, Miri. And the Atta Nasfil, the Bir Hasefer Bezer Sashem, and the Miri writes in a way where we can stop at every point. Okay, just like that. So, Ajay Ha'isha Shalla Halaf. Now, as I read this, um, think to yourself, how is he translating Ajay? Because I don't fully know. Okay, he gives a good explanation, but I don't fully know which of the translations he's doing. So he says, first he says, Kavan is a mismer the Shavach Malas Chach. So that's a little weird, right? Yeah. Why? Uh, yeah, that's one. Rashaim and Sadiqim are not like the Chamim and fools. Also, I think someone made the point last time. Maybe I forgot who that said this, but it's talking about Torah, you oh. know, not Chachma. And it could be easy to say Chachma. There are a lot of Pesukim that, you know, probably going to talk about Chachma. And it sounds like Torah is like the, I don't know, like the learning of and practice of Torah, you know? So, not that that excludes Chachma, but it's a little weird. That's I wouldn't look at this parak and say like, oh, this is all about praising Chachma. Like, you know, the closest thing is that second pasuk, but but you know, not much more than that. Than yeah. avoiding bad people, you know. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The shehi talk with is adam, and that's the uh, the utmost perfection of man, or the the purpose of the perfection, I'm not sure how to read it. V'sheroi lios kolpulos of ponos elzeatachlis, and all of man's actions should turn towards that purpose, that outcome. Hanichbad, that wondrous outcome. Yeah. So that we're going to have to, I guess, uh, just keep that in mind when we read the whole thing, because that's just his thesis. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I mean, unless we want to stop and uh, smell the fruit blossoms <laughs> and try to like figure that out now, or do you, should we let him speak for himself? And uh, um, I think so also. Okay, so now he gets to Ashrei. Milas Ashrei hihi mi'inyan v'somcheha mi'ushar. Okay, so the word Ashrei is from the the idea of its supporters are happy. Oh, sorry, I just said happy. Its supporters are mi'ushar, right? I don't know if that means happy or successful. I think mi'ushar is happy, though. Um, like they're like imbued with Ashrus. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Ozen Shamas... Yeah. Isn't that just the same question of what is Ashrei? But I think, well, what's the phrase? Eitzchayim hi l'machazikim ba v'samchem u'shar d'rachacha d'rachay noam b'chol nesuviyoseh shalom. I feel like in that context, it sound, happiness sounds more plausible than successful. Oh, really? Oh, I would say successful. Because the Eitzchayim? And shalom. Because yeah. I view shalom and noam as more like emotional oh. experience, than like emotional benefits, not like success in the world you know right. you you can't it does lend itself to success but yeah or this next person quotes which i don't know the context of ozen um you know we should look at that in the context here yeah. okay um you have 29, 11. Uh, page 1657. Well, that was weird. I looked in the English and I saw like 38 and then I had to look at the Hebrew to know. Oh, what <laughs> or after. that's funny. Wait, till we just... uh, <laughs> 1657. Okay. It's it's 29, 11. <laughs> And, I, and uh, bear in mind that the English is not necessarily going to like lead us anywhere. Okay. So the pasuk says, "Ki ozen sham ava ta'ashreni, the ayin rasa ba'ta'ideni." When an ear would hear, it would praise me. When an eye would see me, it would vouch for me. Okay, that doesn't help at all. Is, can we get it from the surrounding context? It sounds like praise because look at he goes on to talk about, "For I would rescue a pauper from his wailing and an orphan who had no one to help him. The blessings of Portland would be upon me." Yeah. So praiseworthy then. Okay. Some kind of new shock. Praise. Do we not have that translation? Did I just say happy or successful? Why did I say successful? Right. I feel like praiseworthy. Praiseworthy is the other one. Yeah. Why is it su successful? Did I see something? Did I see something? Maybe I'm getting mixed up with someone else. This is the other thing also that I'm a little. I did a lot over uh, shab this. I don't. Stuff is flowing from different directions, so I'm trying to like keep it with the Miri, but. Uh, yeah, okay. So EO definitely points to successful. Sorry, I said it again. 
Yeah. Praiseworthy, yeah. yeah. Praiseworthy. And the Somkeham Ushar, praiseworthy would also fit in, not as cleanly as the other two possibilities, right? He's claiming the Machazik of Ushar. Sounds like it gives you life. Praiseworthy would not fit in. Yeah. All right, so let's go on. He gives more. I know why I'm saying successful. We'll see. Okay, check this out. It is the Miri. Um, the uh, the word is always in plural. Ashrav, Ashre, Ashrecha Yisrael. Mipneshi Amur Al Kibbutz Hatzlachos. That's why I was thinking it. Okay, because it is said about uh, a collection of successes. So that is the problem. That could fit into either praiseworthy or happy. Meaning, like you were praiseworthy because you succeeded in so many ways, or like you're happy because you've succeeded in so many ways, you know? Oh. Unless you think differently. Yeah. By success. I mean, actually, let's finish it with yeah. one more sentence. I don't know what he means, la ashro, but there's no path. I think maybe it means there's no path to his success uh, on only one. So there's no path to his ashrus on only one success. Unless that success that uh, matter includes many successes. You see what I mean? Like he's giving a very clear definition, but I just don't know what it is. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Success seems like it doesn't fit as well with praise maybe. Just because I don't know. I guess in EO, like it makes sense different, whereas like it's like helping people. Right, but don't people I mean people praise successful people, don't they? Yeah. And if he's talking okay, well I guess this is Okay, if you combine this with his intro, Kavanas and Mizmor the Shevach Ma'alas Hachachma, the Shihi Tahlis Shlemus Adam. Does that point us in any direction? So is he talking about like ultimate success? He might be. Yeah, that's like like you're using robotic terminology. Yeah. yeah, yeah, right. And therefore, praiseworthy would seem to be more appropriate, even though like happiness you would think would follow, but it, it seems to be talking about like what makes you praiseworthy as a man mm -hmm. is Chachma. You know, right, right. So should we go on that assumption? Sure. Okay. I'm also wondering, and this is not based on the Miri. This is just based on, on now that we're thinking about this word more than we did last time. Um, are those other guys following different um, models of, uh, of of value systems and like looking for trying to get different successes than what this guy's doing? Uh -huh. You know, the Russia, the Chote, and the Lates. Right. I guess we'll see what he explains. Okay, ready for something that'll make the uh, Malvim uh, cringe? Oh, yeah. Okay, so going on in the Miri. I'm thinking, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, did I skip a line? Hold on. Is that the next page? Yeah, we're on the next page, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, the initial ideas. So it ascribes this, or sorry, it ascribes the matter to three sects or three groups. Each, uh, each one with its own language. Same thing with the, the manner of clinging to them. It ascribes to each one of them its own lashon. And same thing with the quality of their actions. So in other words, you've got three different people, three different ways of relating to them, and then three different um, uh, qualities of their actions. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Miri. <laughs> I didn't see you there. All right. So the, our, our rabbis asked, and I think that Ibn Ezra quoted this, and if he's not walking with them, how could he stand with them? Right? And that's like standing with them, like like pausing while you're walking, I think. Right? Otherwise, it is uh, more engaged, or at least presupposes an engagement from the walking, okay. right? Um, as opposed to the reading of it's less engaged because you might be standing with them, but you're not walking with them, right? Yeah. V'im lo amad mehechan yashem. If you're not standing with them, how could you possibly sit with them? Okay. Ella melamed, rather this teaches, she'im halach sofo la amod, v'im amad sofo leishev. Did we read that in Ibn Ezra last time or not? Or is this new? I can't remember what I was remember. Okay. So rather this teaches that if, if he walks, he will ultimately stand, which means more 
clinging to them. Vim Ahmad, and if he stands with him, so Felicia, okay, then you're, you're going to end up sitting. Okay, we'll think about that in a second. Let's just uh, finish the, he, his explanation of Chazal's thing. Nire sheha halicha etzlan hi halicha saregel velo shum ikuv ba'olam. So halicha is walking on foot without any stopping. Okay, I don't know ba'olam. Vaha amida hi ikev ikva mu'etas. So walking means you're you're just walking, you're not stopping. Amida is a little bit of stopping. Ka'adam shashoha sham ba'amida, like a person who's just like standing around for a little while. Ba'yeshiva hi ikva tamidis. And sitting is is like a, a, a more permanent type of uh, of stopping. Oh, so wait, so hold on. walking. That's not really that. But like he's saying, Amida is the less least engaged. No, I think he's saying Amida is more engaged because yeah. you're pausing with these with them. Alika, you're you're okay. you're you're uh, you're walking. Maybe walking by them would be better. Okay. Like you're just walking past. Amida is like walking past, you stop, and then you keep on going, and then Yeshiva is you walk, and then you stand, and then you sit. Yeah. Um, I think that's the way to read it. Because um, then he says, A continual uh, socialization or friendship. Okay, now here, here's the part that's going to make them all the uh, fringe. Yeah, uh, and there's no difference between those three either. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, didn't we get into a whole discussion about that last time? Yeah. Uh, who was asking me about that? About like why I'm assuming uh, that it's, yeah. was that you? Why I was assuming that it's different. Yeah, yeah, right. So I guess I got someone to agree with you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and then he says, I, I think he's still explaining Chazal. According to that, they certainly explained well. Because walking with them and, and constantly befriending them or being friends with them or socializing with them will bring you to stand in their path and to um, to cling to their, their uh, And then you'll sit with them and you'll become like them. So that's the end of his step, uh, explanation of Chazal. So the nice thing about this, we don't have to worry about any of these differences. It's, it's the only difference is the Halicha. It's funny that he does say the Halicha, Amida, and Yeshiva. That's where the main idea is. Right. You know, but the people and like yeah. what they're making, how they're drawing you in, that's just like, exactly. they're all the same. Yeah. Which is also like, why, is there a different idea in each of these different amounts, like levels of engagement? Sounds, I mean, it's a good question because it's it, the way he first expressed it sounded quantitative. Yeah. No, no ikvu, ikva, then ikva mu'etas, and then ikva tamidis, you know? But, uh, and maybe it is quantitative. But the question we have to answer is how does the, the this is what I, I um, forgot to use this term last time, but this is like a not slippery slope fallacy, this is an actual slippery slope, right? So how does this exactly work? You know, that um, that uh, if you do this, then so far you're going to stand, and then if you stand, so far you're going to sit. And I do think, uh, I, I, I actually, I don't, uh, we, I think we talked about this initially um, with the uh, the pulling of the hands, is that this is a feature of the Yitzhahara, and I'd like to just get clear how that works, that the Yitzhahara makes you do one step, and you tell yourself, well, I'm, you know, I'm just, like, hanging around these people. I'm never going to go, like, spend time with them, you know, and then you end up going. In fact, I saw a, last night, I think the best depiction of this, excellent movie. I, I was watching a YouTube analysis of the movie. I, I haven't watched the movie in a long time. The Devil Wears Prada. Yeah. Have you seen that? No. Excellent movie. Um, so I won't spoil it. Yeah. But those who have seen it, <laughs> excellent example, excellent depiction of this, or Breaking Bad, obviously, but that's a good, good example of everything. Yeah. So how does it work? How is that? What's the rationalization, or what's the like that, that you have that this won't happen? Which is kind of like expressed by Kazal. Like, if you're not standing, with, if you're not walking with them, how could you possibly stand with them? You know, and then and then what what shifts? It's reminds me of like meet up or something. Yeah, like, I mean, once you give uh, yeah, like, what's your situation thing kind of right. Possible. Yeah. Um, but with one slight thing, this might still apply in Nida, but like, I think there is a difference between 
saying you're not going to give into a certain temptation, being in the situation and then giving in versus I'm not engaged with this activity. And then I engage with it a little bit more saying, I'm never going to go that far. And then I engage in it more. I'm never going to go that far. And then, you know, like over time, you know, not like in the heat of the moment, you know. Right. So I guess the part of the rationale of rationalization is like because there is like you're kind of you're thinking like oh I'm not above. yeah I'm not like them right so then because relative to them you're not above therefore you're not doing anything right yeah it, I I mean would you say then that it has to do with the like the the thing that trips you up is the identification that I am not one of these guys. Right. I'm just interacting with them or whatever, you know? Right. So then what happens? I think that also explains what happens then. So then, I mean, there's no guilt in like doing what they're doing. Right. You're not actually. I'm not one of them. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Pretending. But then I think what happens then is the more, so that causes you to spend more time with them. Uh -huh. And then the more time you spend, the more you identify with them. Right. And then you actually keep on playing. And you actually start becoming them, but you still keep on pulling that maneuver yeah. because, well, at least I'm not like, you know, like hanging out on street corners, like at 2 a.m., like, you know, doing like sketchy things, you know? Right. And then like that, you know, and then, and then you do do that and you're like, well, at least like I came from a nice home, you know? <laughs> and then like, like, and then, you know, and it just keeps on going on and on. Yeah. Yeah. It's identification. Yeah. Um, here's a, a movie that I can spoil. Uh, because I don't think anyone will watch it. There's a movie, I think it's, I think it's based on a true story called Lord of War, uh, with, uh, no, <laughs> yeah, that he also changed, but for different reasons. <laughs> um, but, uh, but in Lord of War, it was about this guy who was, um, played by Nicolas Cage. Uh, this is when Nicolas Cage was like viewed as a good actor. Um, and, um, he was an arms dealer, kind of like a black market arms dealer. So he would, and his like personal policy was, like, um, like I'm not going to be involved in who's right and who's wrong. Like my job is just, I'm just selling the weapons, you know? And he, I saw this a long time ago, but he eventually like over time gets drawn into that whole world and ends up doing a bunch of immoral things. And it has this like rock bottom, like wake up call. Like I became these people who like, uh, who I was not identifying with. Cause I told myself like, I'm not like, going out and starting genocides. Like I'm, you know, I'm just selling, you know, weapons, but yeah. This is also a good, we, okay, this is sounding familiar when you start saying the, uh, that thing, because that's the reverse of what we were saying this morning about how to stay involved with Chachma, yeah. right? I mean, part of being involved with Chachma is keeping a, an identification as someone who's involved with Chachma. And if that starts to be replaced by a new social dynamic, it could slowly chip away you know, uh, without you realizing it. So that's another mistake, which is that I think, so the, the primary mistake is saying that because I don't identify with them, then I'm not like them and I'm not going to become like them. But I think the other thing is viewing your identity as static or as an intrinsic part of who you are, you know, that that can't change. Like, you know, so therefore I don't need to monitor it changing, you know? Right. Yeah. And I don't know if this keep myself away from situations that all affect my Right. Right. Yeah. So the the question is how do you um how do you uh, this, is a, this is very in line with Elvis Dales also. How do you um prevent this from happening? What's the easiest way? Just. Yeah. Just don't go near them, you know? Um uh oh you know what? I'm gonna stop the recording for a second because I have a real world example. Uh I was recording. Yeah, right. And I think that was a good explanation of the idea, right? Okay, not the part that I didn't record. <laughs> so what we said before. Okay, so now let's go on to his explanation. Okay, this is in the Eries. Um, uh, uh, nearly Nevertheless, I've seen fit to give another explanation. So he is going to go in the opposite direction. Walking indicates a stronger and more perpetual clinging to than standing. And Amida is more than sitting. Just let this sink in for a second. 
right? If you're like following someone, that's like a real allegiance. If you're standing with someone, then you're with them. Not if you're sitting, then like no one's going anywhere, <laughs> you know. But like that's like a Naomi, or I mean, um, Bruce in, in conscious Naomi. Then uh, like wherever you go, I'll go. Like that kind of like Halifa, you know, or the Halakta Bidracha, or Afrei Hashem Elkechem Telefu, right? That's like follow after him. Not like that's not casual the way that the Chazal were saying it. That's like devoted, you know. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, the way Chazal were saying it here, where okay. where Halifa is the least connected. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, then he says, so the idea according to me is Shalom uh, Kivin Lashabea Baze Misha Inu Russia or Machis or More. The intent is not to praise the guy who's not a Russia or an uh, uh, to an angerer or a uh, rebel. Shaymin Roy Lomar, Ashay Misha Inu Min, or Kope or Russia or Machis, right? So that, that, that's the uh, that's very low praise, right? Praise rated in our Russia. Even the Hamon and the degenerates, um, the, the people who sit in the Moshe places, even they uh, reject and despise this. They akiru Krisuso and they recognize its degeneracy, right? So, like, yeah, obviously, who, who, go to Baal do you want to be a Russia? No, right? So, yeah. Uh, okay, well, I took a turn. Uh, it is praising someone who who separates from the ways of the world. Oh, so we got to keep in mind, according to this, this is about praise and kafa, right? So the majority of the world chooses it, meaning the Dr. Olam, v'nim shachim and it's drawn after it. Wait, did I skip something? Are there two columns? No, that was it, right? V'nim shachim aharav, right? Um, the majority of the world chooses it and is drawn after it. Kedel yachid levavo v'han hagosa of the Torah ula avodas hakel. You saw that. Wait, wait, wait. I feel like I skipped a word. Moshe rova olam bo brim bo v'nim shachim aharav. Oh, kedei is going back on the previous clause. Orish midrach olam kedei. Okay, there we go. Kedei. So you got to separate from the ways of the world in order to devote your, yourself to uh, Torah and Avodah Sakel. Now check this out. So he too, like Ibn Ezra, doesn't take Russia as the evildoer. He says Russia is the guy who's lusting after money. Yeah. Milashon b'cholasher yifne yarshia, which is ironically the same pasuk that the Ibn Ezra quoted. I guess he's learning it differently. The Ibn Ezra saying it means turbulent. Who yaski who yarshia? Same pasuk that Ibn Ezra quoted. V'lo yimalet resha es bala. That one's not, but that resha I think means um, means well. Let the our spoke have been here. Okay, they. I meant to ask what that French word is. Prudence. Prudence. Maybe Arthur mentioned all the Yeah. Um, it says. Oh, so they don't translate it that way. They say wickedness cannot save its wrongdoer. So he's learning it as well. Okay, fine. Okay. Um, so we bruge and see. All right. So I'll, I'll try to figure out for, for Thursday. Let's go on. Um, next page, right? Okay, so money, Iva. Okay, the ability to without um, getting what you need, what your essential bodily needs are, rot der hana umosar. Only by way of pleasure and excess. What he means there, let me make a bet. Why does he have to qualify it with the built in Torah of Rafi Lamaras Kuvo, Rock Derkana O Mozart? Yeah, I think so, right? I think, I think he's trying to say that, like, it's not the taiva that's bad, it's that if you're going after your taiva, either in excess or in a way that is, like, not. Um, Taking care of your bodily needs. For example, Sabernachi Lil Kim Lakel I mean, I know that's not bodily kindness, but like, like, you know, 
my soul thirst for the living God, the Tafma, then you are like there. Like we saw the Tava Gola later, Hashem. Like the Taiva is not bad. Yeah, it's Taiva intervars is going to be destructive to you and like catering to excess or just for pleasure. You know, mm-hmm. it's a weird thing to say though, but like, yeah. but it sounds like he is qualifying his statement. Like you said, he might have deals for me die off our titles. That that would have been fine with that. Um, it's only too much if it is uh, detrimental to you, um, and uh, what do you call it? And if it is, um, oh yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause this also. Uh, or like Slomo Malachi and Kohelis that we did earlier in the year of like if you're pursuing Kafma in a fantasy based way, where like this is gonna solve all of my problems, or like like I'm gonna know everything, or or for cover, you know. So how as an object of pursuit can definitely be um lend itself to bad design. But the real question is can you do can you an obvious can not in those ways, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Uh I suppose it could though. Because if it draws you out of the world. Like that's why I'll have to warn you that if you're involved in Ava Sashem, don't abandon your Sashem. You know. You have to say that. Because obviously you're really not in the classical realm. You're, you're only involved in the uh, in in the realm of the of your mind being involved in ideas, you know. In the external speed. Uh not according to my understanding of the long sitting your session is gonna always be taking into account the self. So, and I'll check if you lose yourself. Really? Like let's say like with a little kid test. Yeah. But it, like if it's like if, let's say you're Yeah. We'll have to square that with the Shval Ruach and Evos Deos, though. They should go all the way to the extreme. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's finish the uh, his chat. Um, just like it ascribes that lashon to to uh, unintentional sins. Okay, fine. Um, uh, uh, even though he uses them with meaning the taivas with intent and choice, who savor Oh, this is the guy's rationale. That since I'm not doing an actual prohibitive avera, so he's involved in the permissible pleasures, five as I mean, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So that's what he thinks. He's like, it's not us, sir. Right. You know. And I guess the Mamun guy would also think that, you know, unless he's like doing illegal stuff. Right. Yeah. And that. that but he, sorry. He, sorry, I think he's trying to explain though, why it's called by the same word as shkaga, why it's why mm-hmm. it's called chote, okay. because he tells himself that. He's not doing uh, an intentional sin, I guess. Hmm. Yeah, what were you going to say? Uh, two things. One, it uh, highlights that aspect that it's the six months of the yeah. six Sabbath. Um, but also, that's the, that's the rationale that we were saying for the, the guy with the Lord of Wisdom. Like, that he, he's like, oh, I'm not actually doing anything problematic. I haven't actually crossed any hard line. Right, right. Yeah. Although I was putting the emphasis, on, you're talking about today, right? Yeah. Yeah. I was putting the emphasis though on the I'm not the kind of person who does that, you know? Yeah. Which I think is a new, a slightly, yeah. slightly different thing. But yeah, practically speaking, he will say I'm, I haven't done X. But I think the thing that allows, see, if it was all about not doing X, then he would not do X. But it's because I'm not the kind of low life who does X. Right. And then once he gets to the point where he's doing it, he's not viewing himself as a low life. He's like identified with these people now, you know? Yeah. Um, then late team, him hanashim pnuyim, free agents. <laughs> They're free, right? Mitzad pachisusam v'sholalam mikol chachma umiyadiyas malacha umama shiz askubo. So these are bums, that we would call bums, right? Like not homeless people. I didn't mean to insult homeless people, I was saying bums, you know, like low life bums. Um, 
because of their degeneracy and their sholalus, their the deprivation of all chachma and knowledge of malacha and or money that they're involved in. Umavim itosem behevo ubishivas kranos. They spend all their time doing waste of time and sitting on corners. Vedaber v'inyan ha'olam uveprate b'nei adam and like just talking about worldly things and like details of people. Zebakov, Zebakov, this guy here, that guy there. Right, so like, like people who just like hang around doing nothing, just gossiping and like not involved in work or building up the world, right? Kuma Amar Hafacham Shamar Hapusim Hanavalim. So the Pusim are the Navalim. Everyone trying to say others. Yotsiu Bedaber Al Hanifbarim Malasam. Don't know what that means. Vein Savik Shakol Misbatel Minatora Vinimna Milachas Bedarke Havodas Akel. It, without a doubt, anyone who uh, abstains from Torah and refrains from walking after the ways of Avodah Zakel, the Zulas Hayos Amin Akovrim Hamachisim, even if they're, sorry, the Zulas, meaning even if they're not Kovrim and Machisim, okay, Umikat Achas Me'elosibus, he's going to be in uh, in one of these groups, okay? Is that Mikat? Is that, what does footnote 13 say? Mikoach. Okay, fine, whatever. So he's going to be in one of these three categories. Either you're going to be involved in, involved in lusting after money and profit. He adds a bunch of qualities there. And kavod and, and victory and authority. Okay, so like accomplishments, I guess, like, you know, like the, the pursuing success, like ambition, accomplishment, whatever, right. worldly success. Or you're, you've abandoned your body to be involved in, in pleasures and uh, enjoyments. Bal nefesh and bal ruach. Uh, the first one would be the bal ruach. And the second would be bal nefesh. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know what shoif ruach is. Is that like... Like what we would say, like breathing, breathing hot air, or like, like, I don't know. Umis ani biyeshivas kranos vamidas hashvakim vaharachovas. It refers us to Alpi Yirmiyah fourteen six. Yirmiyah fourteen six. Show if we lock. Page eleven oh five. Oh, yeah. Air suckers. <laughs> they suck in air like serpents. Yeah, that's what they do. I didn't know serpents. I thought they hiss. You know, like. Suck in air. I, I don't know that. I, I guess I haven't met enough uh, servants. Um, and they enjoy sitting on corners and standing in markets and streets. Uh, to hear the news, to talk about waste of time. And to look at, uh, to search after people in this time. So you're saying that there's some people who, are, who their their abstention from Torah comes from one, two, or three causes. So I like this parish in the sense that it really shows you a target of who the Pasuk is talking about. We're not praising people who are not Rashaim, Hatayim, and Leitim uh, in the sense of the bad guys. Right. We're saying people who are not bad guys, but they're also not involved in Torah, but they're caught up in the world in a certain way. Right. And that those people are, wait, sorry, did we say praiseworthy was the one? Yeah. are praiseworthy uh, if they, they instead of doing that, are involved in Torah Sashem. Mm -hmm. um, but do we have time to read this next part? Probably not, right? No, okay, fine. All right, so we'll have to pick up next time. But is, is this good so far? I think Meiri is like smoother sailing yeah. than Ibn Ezra. Yeah, yeah, all right, good. All right, let's stop here for tonight. All righty, yeah.